So this week you announced a second uh, mm -hmm. ETF. You announced one back in May uh, yeah. that was a flexible income, as I recall. Now this is total return. Yeah. Why did you do it? So a couple of things, as you said, I mean, they, there's been an explosion of demand for ETFs. It's a pretty incredible how the industry has developed and how clients are looking more for things that are liquid, transparent, use them for tax strategies, build models, and the models allow you to be dynamic around putting ETFs in. And, and so there's a whole new co cohort of investors and existing clients that say, gosh, the ETF wrapper is a really effective one. So we are taking a lot of our strategies, and the one we're launching now is our total return strategy, very close to what is the mutual fund. Um, and, but it gives people who want to use that wrapper, it gives them the ability to do it. And you know, we launched this income fund that is roughly similar to a fund we run called, uh, called SIO, Strategic Income Opportunities. But boy, it's gotten the receptivity to it, the, the rate at which it's grown. And some of it is because it's an income producing 7% yield in an environment like this with a low volatility to it. Similar, people are coming into high yield, but this is actually lower volatility, so it's gotten a tremendous amount of, uh, of attention, people putting money in, and so we're launching this one, which is more of total return, like when people do 60-40, this would be the 40. And so an ag index like, but we use a lot of strategies to generate more return than the index. So that's why it's gotten a lot of attention, and I think you'll see a lot of people say, particularly now with rates having backed up, gosh, equities have had a good go. I'm going to look for some fixed income, and total return is a nice match to your, to your equity portfolio. If I'm putting together a portfolio, and let's assume I want some ETFs in it, uh, how do I choose your ETFs as opposed to some, some others? I mean, how does this fit into my portfolio? What does it balance against? So, I mean, I'd say one thing about fixed income, and I, you know, I, do, I run a lot of equity portfolios and fixed income portfolios. The one thing about fixed income is there 68,000 fixed income securities versus you know, the S&P 500. There are 68,000 and your ability to create additional return by using your research, your analytics, your quant. Fixed income market to most investors is a pretty opaque market. It's just hard to figure out, should I buy a double A CLO, a triple A commercial mortgage backed security? So the benefit of, and, and one of the secrets to fixed income for so many years is if you can run more income than the index, but then manage your volatility, because a lot of parts of the index are inefficient, they're too rich, they're in, and so you cut out the bad stuff, and then you build a lot of income and you can outperform, and most managers, ourselves included, most managers in fixing them outperform, outperform indices. You know, what we think we're, we're pretty good at is we use so much analytics, risk management, and, you know, increasingly artificial intelligence, looking at data signals, you know, our research allows us to look at collateral under a, under a mortgage, residential commercial mortgage. So, you know, the ability to tap into our resources to try and create, you know, real return when income is now so beneficial is, uh, is something that I think, you know, why, why I think people will, will invest in it. This is an active investment, as I understand. Correct. Uh, which is important. I mean, you, you did get that Morningstar Award, yes, sir. Best Portfolio Manager Thank in 2023, you. Thank you. Uh, which is featured. So if I'm looking at various alternatives, how much of this is betting on Rick Reeder and his team yeah. being able to manage all that complicated world of bonds that you just described? Yeah, so it's a great question. I've never been asked that in, 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 in a couple of different So we launched the first one, which is this income fund. And that is very much an aggressive, we'll look at things like European investment credit, European high yield emerging markets. And so it's very much an aggressive, because we're trying to keep our income high, you know, 7% income when an index is five-ish. So that is very much tapping into, because we're taking risk to get that, to get that yield. Total return is still, you know, we're trying to, uh, we're trying to beat the index, but we're more tethered to the index. I mean, it should be much more sincere to the aggregate index. So people should count on it doing interest rate wise, credit wise, relative to the index. So when people put it in their portfolio against equities, they should look at it relative to that. We've had a really good track record, knock, knock wood, of uh, beating the index. And so, you know, but, but the differentiation in total return, we are going to be more index oriented. We're just going to try and create an extra 100 basis points or so over that index over time versus my income one. We're just going to try and create a lot of income for you persistently. Now, I'll pay a little something for that active management. I yes. think it's 40 basis points. Is that where we yep. are, basically? Yep. Uh, you have some competition. You're the big guy still yep. in ETFs, mm -hmm. but you've got some big guys coming up behind you, people like Vanguard, for example. Sure. How much of this is competing on price at this point, where people say, I just want to get the fees down? 
You know, it's a great question, and and you know, I'm not I'm in the managing of the portfolio, so I don't get really get into the commercial aspect of it so much. But I will say I will say one thing that in fixed income particularly that I think people look for firms that have a lot of resources that can really go global, can look at sectors. Do you want to buy the two, you know, the two year? Do you want to buy seven years? Do you want to use a little of your illiquidity bucket? That I think scale and fixed income is a really, really big deal. And I think having resources to create that scale, I think, is really important. So, and you know, the one thing I've learned about ETFs, equity and debt, scale is a big deal. You, you look at over time how certain ETFs become dominant. And even though the fee is, uh, is a bit higher, because you have so much liquidity and because you know it's going to do what you expect it to do, then people are comfortable, are comfortable with that. And I think that's been the right approach. Uh, so when you talk about scale, Rick, uh, how high can these trees grow toward the sky? There's a lot of talk about, in fact, the ETFs overtaking mutual funds by the end of the decade. So I think in mutual funds, I think, I think, are, a, um, I think are a very effective platform. So, you know, I could do a little bit different in terms of things I could do in our mutual fund. I tend to do more where I can do single name financing in the mutual fund. I can I use more hedges. You know, I'll use, I do a lot of things to hedge my risk using options, et cetera, which I don't use as much of in the, in the ETF. So I think the mutual fund wrapper is durable. But uh, yes, if you said me the direction of travel, are ETFs going to grow f significantly faster and, power and overtake mutual funds, whatever funds? I, th I think so. I think so because people love the transparency, love the models, so they can put them in models. And obviously, this, you can manage tax effectively through it. So my sense is the growth will, be, will be, continue to be faster there.